but CBS Sports this afternoon brings us to Blacksburg, Virginia, Castle Coliseum in the ACC. It's the Cardinals of Louisville and the Hokies of Virginia Tech. And we welcome you to Blacksburg, everybody. I'm Brad Nestor. It's been a costly week for the Louisville basketball program. On Tuesday, the NCAA denied Louisville's appeal of sanctions handled down and penalties handed down due to the sex scandal involving escorts. What does that mean? That means 123 wins vacated, including a 2012 Final Four appearance and the 2013 national title. That's the first time ever a championship's been vacated in the Final Four era. Jim Spinarkel is my partner. And Jim, let's face it, it hasn't been a great week for college basketball all around, but let's focus on Louisville and what it means to them approaching this game today. We talked to David Padgett a little while ago. Yeah, the one good thing about this is they played Duke on Wednesday of this week, so they've been on the road since Tuesday, and so the distractions have been very limited. But when we spoke to Coach Padgett before the game, the one thing he did emphasize was his number one goal is to get this team to the NCAA tournament, primarily for his team and most importantly for the two seniors on this team. Well, that's why it's important in the ACC and the NCAA. As you look at Louisville, they've lost six of their last nine, so they're in desperate need of a win. Virginia Tech has won four of its last five. They're doing it with great shooting, Jim. Louisville is a great defensive team, and if they're going to win this game today, they better slow down this offense efficiency that Virginia Tech will throw at them. On the left, they shoot it at 51% overall, but just under 40% from the three-point line, so Louisville has to really contend on the perimeter. Let's take a look at our AT&T fast analysis. Virginia Tech really runs when Justin Robinson is doing well. He uses a lot of high screens. His number one goal is to get into the middle of the floor so he can make decisions. Look at all the attention that he draws to him. He is very, very good at either scoring by himself or finding the right shooter in the right sequence. On the other hand, Louisville will have to go up and down the floor. The pace of this game may be a little slower than what Louisville wants to play, but they're going to look for the transition offense. They're number one in the league in terms of blocking shots, so if they can get another easy one off the defense, they're going to take it as much as they can. The ACC tournament's just around the corner. The NCAA tournament to follow. Both these teams looking for a win. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by Infinity. Empower the drive. Chick-fil-A's Egg White Grill. And by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things spring. Starling line, it's Louisville starting a little bit smaller today than normal. And Virginia Tech, the guy to watch for, Justin Robinson, he's the leader. David Padgett, the interim head coach in his first year at Louisville, 18 and 10. They were 15 and 4 at one point, but they've hit a tough stretch, as I mentioned, when we looked at the standings. And on the other side, Buzz Williams, his fourth year here in Blacksburg. They've won 20 or more three straight seasons, including this year, 20 and 8 coming into this one. 41st matchup between these two teams. Louisville's won 13 straights. Been a long time since the Hokies won, but they're in front of their home crowd. A sellout again every game, and the ACC's been sold out, and it's already rocking here in Blacksburg underway. Yeah, Brad, the last three times these teams played, Louisville scored over 90 points. I'm sure that Virginia Tech is thinking early and often, let's keep this a slow-down half-court pace, and that's how Virginia Tech has been playing the last three times out. About five weeks ago, the matchup between these two, Louisville won it on their home court, 94-86. Ooh. I wish they a foul, and it's going to be on Justin Robinson. First thing you see when you look at Louisville is the length of this team. Three-pointer goes by Quentin Snyder. Good work early on, too. A patient set just that to start things off for the Cardinals. If you're if you're adjusting the hue on your TV, Virginia yeah. Tech is wearing pink today. Breast Cancer Awareness is an external relations administrated person that's very close to Buzz Williams, and they're doing it to send their hopes and prayers along to that individual. Ball out to Virginia Tech. And as we touched on at the beginning, watch for their shooting. They're a very, very good three-point shooting team. 
don't really post up all that much in their offense, but they do drive and slash to the basket to kick things out. Robinson's got to take a three with the shot clock winding down, and he buries it. He's at 41% on the season, and he is really into the stroke. He, he just really understands when to take his shot. Obviously, a clock situation there where he had to go quicker than normal. Snyder, great crossover dribble, got the feed underneath, but it's stripped out of there. Justin Robinson, Jr. You take a look at early. Remember, he's a lefty shooter. Not too bad, the defensive effort just then by Spalding, who's long. Remember, he's a tall, long guy at 6'10", an easy shot, too, relatively speaking, for Robinson. They switch out front, you'll notice, on a lot of the screens. Adell trying to feed it inside, and Louisville turns it over. On occasion, you'll see Virginia Tech get down the court in transition, and they will spread the court. Looking for their threes. Trying to get it inside. Kicks by Ray Spaulding out of bounds. So we did get a look at Virginia Tech looking to get the basketball into Blackshear on the post a little bit. Blackshear sets a high screen for Robinson. We're going to try to go in between everyone and does. Well, Blackshear moved just a little bit legally and caused a little confusion defensively for Louisville that trip, but the decision maker making a great judgment coming through the middle of the floor. Adele, the kick out baseline. Nice job to get over and prevent the three. This three comes from the other side and down it goes. And that's Dwayne Sutton. Good spacing, too, by Sutton just then. He kind of slid down the side of the floor so his teammate could see him. Don't stand way out at a bad angle. Get to a good angle so you can receive the ball and get right into your shot. So the Cardinals, who only had two three-pointers against Duke early this week, have two already here in the opening two and a half minutes. Still trying to find Blackshear down there. They can't get it to him. I think he swung it to Robinson. He's got a small, big mismatch. Wilson through traffic, got it up on the rim, and now Louisville's got numbers, and that's what they do very, very well, Spalding. You know, he's so quick, coming down the middle of the floor, but one thing I really like about him is his understanding of how and when to release as a big guy. A lot of times you don't want your big guy releasing until you make sure you have the basketball right down the middle, and he is long and get off the floor. Robinson finally gets it to Blackshear, but there'll be a foul inside before the shot. That'll be on B.J. King. And you take a look. Now he knows that he has some space and he can run because he understood that his teammates corralled the rebound defensively. And if you can get a big guy like that, you know, it's 6'10", 215, running the floor. That is such an advantage, as we touched on at the beginning. A little tip out, I'm going to stay with Virginia Tech. If they can get some easier buckets, they'll be in pretty decent shape this afternoon. Jim, that's one thing that's never changed from Louisville. If you go back to the Denny Crum era, well, they, they know how to run. They do. They sure do. And even with the game, the way it's changed overall, you know, a lot of teams run the floor, they spread out, kind of hit the freeze. This team will come at you, hit the angles from 15 feet away, and then drive to the basket with it. Robinson, what? He's been something here early. Yeah, way too easy, though. You better remember, the scouting report, a lefty player, where's he going to go? He's going to try to get to his left, his strong side. Got to jump it a little bit, force him right. He had a huge game against North Carolina State, 32 earlier this season. He's already off to a hot start with seven. That three-pointer off the mark, and the Hokies pull down the rebound. That is Justin Bibbs. Bibbs is going to find an avenue, and he scores plus one. Yeah, one of the interesting things about Bibbs is about a little over 50% of his shots come from the three-point three strike. So if you've pay, paid any attention to the scouting report, you're going to stay out there with him. And I think that's the problem that Sutton had. You can see his shoulders were leaning just a little bit towards half court. And that was a perfect, perfect read by Bibbs to go by him, a guy normally known for his outside shooting. Bibbs, what a great player here, senior out of Dayton, Ohio. That basket gives him 1,393 points in his career. Doesn't get the three-point play, though. But he does give Virginia Tech the lead back. Here's my mood now in the lineup. Didn't start today. He's their big shot locker. And he walks. So Virginia Tech.
with a one-point lead here on their home court in Blacksburg. And that will do it as Louisville completes the emotional journey to the championship. Your 2013 national champions, the Louisville Cardinals. Well, that after the NCAA ruling this week basically never happened. As Louisville's forced to vacate 123 wins, including the 2012 Final Four appearance and that 2013 national title that Jim Nance called. School must also return conference revenue from 2012 to 2015's NCAA tournaments and forced to take down the banner from that 2013 championship. Former head coach Rick Pitino called the NCAA ruling unjust. The interim athletic director likewise said basically the same thing this week. And for this team, really, Brad, it's about focusing on what they have to do on this court. Sometimes being on the floor is, is a good way to get, get away from yeah. any distractions. You know, kids love to play sports. Kids love to be participating and competing. And they're worried about making a run here at the end of this season. Right now, that run would give them 19 wins if they can pull off a road victory here at Castle Coliseum. And the way Virginia Tech has been playing lately, this would be a very good road win. Nice cut inside, a good pass. The entry into Devin Wilson, and he'll go to the free throw line. Nice little delay cut just then. Wilson understands he doesn't score a whole lot, but he's going to just set the team up with a little backdoor run, and then you look at the shot blockers coming after him with a little body bump. He ends up going to the line for a pair. 11 celebrities and the Big Brother house will be the last one standing find out on the live season finale of Celebrity Big Brother tomorrow after 60 minutes on CBS. Wilson played football a year ago for Virginia Tech and missed both free throws. Looked like a football player on that, but actually he's been a really good player over the time he's been here. He played 96 games over three seasons before that red shirt last year. Cardinals ball. Out of bounds. They're using that length a little bit. What one of the things Louisville wants to do is try to look down low. Mabu tried to go over the top just then. Deflection out front by Blackshear. Perspiration out there. The clean up duty. Yeah. Unlike the Seton Hall game earlier this week up at Providence for that condensation from the... Took a couple days for that one, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They came back at noon the following day to finish that one off. Seton Hall with a win. Here's an open look at a three <laughs> off the mark from King. Blackshear with a rebound. Those are the ones you have to hit if you're Louisville on the road especially. Nice little release pass, too. Not looking for that mismatch down low. There Good it is. Lob. Yeah. And Blackshear with a rebound. They've been working to get it to him, they finally do. Yeah, they did with, you know, with that high screen, and they're going to switch. If Snyder's going to switch on Blackshear, you have to take a one dribble almost away from the basket, let him get reloaded down deep and find him. That was excellent offense in the half-court set. That was from a mile out from Adele. So they missed back-to-back -back threes. And watch him in the open court. Nice and ball. a nice kick out. Extra pass, baseline, triple. Good ball movement. Just didn't finish. Pretty good defensive transition, though, by Virginia Tech, that trip. Snyder has to bring that ball a little bit more to the middle of the floor. There's a lob. They'll try it. I thought they were going to try a third three in a row. Good no call. Instead, they work inside, and Sutton can't get it underneath. And a whistle and a foul. Blackshear picks up his first. Start getting the start, you know, get some minutes in the last few weeks or so, playing well. And he has to be aggressive underneath. Every time they get the basketball down there, Brad, regardless of whether they're, there's a disadvantage in terms of one or two guys on, I think if you get it five feet in, if you're Louisville, go right to the basket with it. Get yourself to the free throw line. Sutton, redshirt of a year ago, too, a transfer from... UNC Asheville, where he was really a good player. In fact, it was their conference tournament MVP when he was a freshman. And only 64% from the free throw line. The Tech has to be ready to block out. Got the second. Yep. Okay. Four for Sutton. Opens by two. Bisa Petey in the lineup for the first time for Virginia Tech. 
Bibbs gets it to Bibby. Jumpers in that. This man on the floor who has the ball right now. Watch him. He's a shooter from long range generally. By the feet inside, they turn it over. They're third. And through it to the knees of Spalding. Stronger, harder bounce pass gets that to the waist. He might have had a, he may have had a bucket on that trip. Now, never look with Robinson not out there. Maybe trying to run the point. Here's Blackshear with the left hand. Well, Louisville is switching everything on the outside, and I think Virginia Tech is making some good decisions again with Blackshear. He had McMahon on for just a moment, then they switched back. But you can't allow him to establish that early position. And a walk on Perry. Back-to-back -back turnovers for the Cardinals. And the post with Blackshear, you see now he's got great position for a simple catch. And when you allow a guy like that who's 6'10", he's got some bulk, 260, difficult shot he makes, but he's going to get a good look when he works and, he, and, his, and if he's patient down there with his footwork, which he has pretty good footwork to make those drop step moves. And he's all of 6'10". Watching yeah. him warm up, he looked like a 7-footer at least. Davey the crossover, trying to go to the rack with his left hand. Locked inside, so the Cardinals are number three shot blocking team in the country. Got one there, and in transition, a slam on the other end for Spalding. Now, for those of you not paying attention, that was Spalding who blocked the shot at one end and dunked it at the other. <laughs> That's pretty good. That says a whole lot about his athletic ability and his understanding of when to run the floor. against the smaller guard Spalding's block and he drove past him. There's a good look down low. Blackshear's pass inside. And Hill with his first basket. So we've seen two of those for Virginia Tech. Understanding the time to go is so important. Pull up from the elbow. Rebound off to Bibbs. And Bibbs on the run by himself. One on five. <laughs> basket goes but he's fouled before the shot. So the best shot blocking team with the ACC, Spalding. Now watch him run the floor. He understands there's that first pass. You don't see him now because he's busting down the other end of the floor to make things happen. Both teams go to the bench. There's Clark coming in for the first time today for Virginia Tech. And he'll be the inbound man on the baseline. Going to add one more. Also in for your Hokies, number four, Nikita And with Louisville's substitutions just then, they, were, they have their big lineup in right now. And it is long, lengthy. They block a lot of shots. Mahmoud in there and Spalding. You can see they had a hard time just getting the inbound pass. So again, Justin Robinson, normally the leader of this group on the bench right now. That hasn't seemed to hurt them. They've maintained their four-point lead. It's Clark, the handoff on the drive, Hill off the mark. Snyder comes out of the pile with him. Picked up a screw last night in those courts. Let a catch it drive. Perry got it over. Adele gave up a three. Snyder won't and got it. See what Adele did just then. That's the interesting part of the, the perimeter offense. When you catch the ball, sometimes guys just catch it and kind of say, okay, now I got to think about what to do. He caught the basketball, and as he was catching it, he was getting into his next action. And that opened up the other side of the floor with the corner jumper. Snyder's second three of the game's got it to one at the 11 minute mark. Here's Hill for three. And a little bit of a set shot there for 42%. Three ball shooter. That's going to continue to bring Louisville out to the perimeter. He's just four points shy of a thousand for his career with that triple he just nailed. It's going the other way too for the push off. So four point lead. Hill with a three from the outside.
Win Star World Casino and Resort Iron Cowboy. PBR second major of the season tonight, 10.30 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. And tomorrow at noon Eastern on CBS Sports. I could see you bull riding or oh, calf yeah. roping, something like that. You think, huh? Virginia Tech trying to <laughs> lasso a uh, bid to the NCAA tournament. I mean, North Carolina was 10th, Virginia was second, Clemson was 15th. That's just in the last what, week and a half. Or yeah, so. exactly. And they've won four out of their last five games for Buzz Williams. And the one loss was at Duke. So a loss that's not going to hurt you really in terms of your resume. But they've started, you know, when you get teams, I can always think, Brad, with the last four or five games of your regular season before the ACC tournament or any tournament, those five or four or five games before the tournament it tells you a lot about how a team is getting ready to play and what their mindset is all about. Right. All the way around the baseline, out the hill. I had to worry about the shot clock, but it's under 10, I think, for the first time today. Yep, and this is on the perimeter defensively by Louisville. Watch when he drives. Beating with a rainbow. One of the things that Louisville's trying to do is make sure this best shooting, three-point shooting team in the ACC, Virginia Tech, doesn't burn them. But Virginia Tech has made some terrific adjustments early to just drive the basketball. That's a tough shot. Turn around on the wing. And Virginia Tech with their biggest lead of six. That's not getting there, right? Leek Williams' arms are just too long for that one. That's their first turnover, though. Some traffic might have gotten away with a walk, and Snyder's third three of the first half. And one of the things you could rely on with Snyder is just continues to improve. A terrific player, understands the offense so well and where the shots are going to come from. Former Kentucky Mr. Basketball, his senior season, played at Ballard High School in Louisville. There's Clark, whoops, lost the dribble, but got it back. Watch out. That's an air ball. Mahmoud pulls that one down. Louisville can cut it to one or tie at this trip. You got to catch that ball. Catch the ball. You got to lay up just then. Williams with the little bobble. For the tie. And Mahmoud keeps it alive. Snyder thought about it. He's hit three already from outside the arc. Be patient here. You have a little size advantage. Mahmoud with the left hand. Virginia Tech with the rebound. And yeah, they kept Williams off the offensive glass that trip. Clark might have got away with a carry, but he did draw a foul. And that's going to be uh, Malik Williams. Monday on CBS, it's premiere of Living Biblically. Joining a lineup of great other comedies begins with Kevin Can Wait, Man with a Plan, and Superior Donuts. All starts Monday at 8, 7 Central, only CBS. At the line, Chris Clark. Might be the most recognizable player in the ACC. <laughs> Courtesy of his hairdo. He did take the headset off he though, that he was using for warm-ups. <laughs> he, he had the white headset on and the whole thing working, <laughs> including the tights. And now he's down to red shoes. I don't think he had those on earlier. No, I don't think so either. Clashing with the pink uniform. It is just a little a touch. bit. Just a little bit. Junior out of Virginia Beach. He's been a good player. He's their top rebounder, in fact. Almost seven a game. actually had three double doubles this season coming off the bench shows you the value of his participation and contributions to the Hokies team Hokies have five players that average in double figures Clark's not one of them but he's just south of that at 8.3 game Wow and loose ball comes off to Chris it's the right recognition too and that's gonna go the other way off his foot lost it off his knee nice work by Perry at half court closing in defensively fans wanted a foul on Perry didn't get the call well, let's see if he's. Uh, he looks like he's separated it. Yeah, I think so. You know, if anything, it was the arm that came out just then for Clark to initiate. That's why they don't give away whistles as giveaway <laughs> items in places like this. To the 9,100 that are here with us. <laughs> well, there they got one. Yep, little hop step at half court. <laughs> Everything's better now. Yeah, exactly. Now let's take a look. Watch his left foot. It becomes the pivot foot right now. There's a the little uh, double, yeah, there double it was. step. Yeah, just at the very end there, the left step. Good catch. Robinson back in there now. That's why these, a lot of officials get criticized for calls, and they make a lot of good ones, they too. They do, really. 
I mean, that one you had to wait and be patient to watch where that came from. There's an offensive foul. As Blackshear was moving, trying to set a screen. That's his second. And that might sit him because we're right about the eight minute mark. Nope, just not. Yeah, I'd be real careful if I were him defensively, and I'd go at him if I were Louisville. It's not a graphic you want if you've had as many turnovers as field goals made. If that's the case for Louisville, and now you can add one more to seven. And Clark dishes underneath to his teammate. And Tyree Jackson off the bench with his first basket. And I like the delivery too, especially the timing of it. This is where you got to be careful if you black sure coming out. Snyder for three. That's where length helps right there. Coming down with a six-point lead. Robinson just had to tip that to Clark because he would have double dribbled. Blackshear is fouled. Nice nope. balling. Yeah, the only reason Blackshear gets that call, Spalding starts to go up a little bit straight. Blackshear made sure there was contact on that play. So good half-court offense again for Virginia Tech. Hokies with their biggest lead, up 6, 23 to 17. Turnovers have been an issue so far for Louisville. In the first half here, Brad Nestler, Jim Spinarco, we talked to David Patrick before the game. He said, I'm worried because they shoot the ball so well and they play defense so well. He was right on both counts. Absolutely, but keep in mind that this team, Virginia Tech, likes to shoot the three ball. They really haven't relied on that this afternoon early in this game, so they made some adjustments early to drive the basketball at the Louisville defenders. And at times, some of the taller guys have been getting in mismatches against the smaller guys from Virginia Tech. Well, when you're shooting 59%, you force seven turnovers, you're bound to be ahead, and they are. By six with 718 remaining in the first half. Last year at the free throw line. Last year, 74% free throw shooter. Nails the first one, so he's got five for the game. Wednesday on CBS, SEAL Team returns. Whole new mission begins. Don't miss a new episode at a special time. Wednesday at 10, 9 Central. Only CBS. Junior out of Orlando. His dad, a great player in college, as was his mother for that matter. But still playing with those two fouls right now. And smart play just then to take him out, especially when they're getting the basketball, to, giving it to Louisville and going down the defensive side, get Blackshear off the floor. You do not want to get him his third foul before this first half disappears. Cardinals hit their first three field goals, Jim. They're three out of 14 cents. It's not going to do it. Trailing by eight. Yeah, a little bit on the stagnant side, aren't they? When you yeah. watch it, the ball's there, and one pass is not going anywhere, not making anything happen. Extra pass underneath, and a great defensive play. No, it wasn't a great defensive play. It was a foul. That'll be a Devin Wilson. Well, when you look at it, now all of a sudden, right now, they start to make something happen with the basketball, and that allows Sutton to go back door. But a couple of times, a few possessions they've had where they're just passing the ball out front, Catching it, looking, not doing anything. Catch it, do something with it. Get rid of it after a second if you don't have anything to do with it. Jim mentioned before Sutton, not a great free throw shooter. One of three so far today. Got the second. Five for Dwayne Sutton, which is over his average considerably already. One tie at three for the most part. It's been Virginia Tech's game since. And Louisville continues to just stay with the man to man. Robinson lets fly. <laughs> Quick trigger. Yeah, and the reason they're staying in man to man is because they were afraid of playing his own because this team shoots the ball from <laughs> long range a little bit. 40% almost from three point land and seventh in the country overall in field goal percentage tops of the ACC and Robinson will just wear you out with his good decisions Wow that went off the side of the backboard so we've seen Robinson go by a few people already so all of a sudden Perry starts to say hey you know what I'm not gonna get burned going backwards to the basket so he leans a little bit back and what does Robinson do? He just reads it immediately. His, his reactions and his timing to the reads against the defensive player are just extraordinary. 
Leads both teams right now with 10. The lead, likewise, is 10. He gets something going to the hoop. Again, Adele gives up the open three, kicks it back to Perry, and he's off the front of the iron. And Wilson will track it down on the baseline. Virginia Tech stop at the drive. Louisville not hitting the shots. Bad combination for Louisville. Pretty good move to the hoop, but Bibbs doesn't finish. Had to go with his weak hand, the right hand on that trip, but it's a pretty good drive. Snyder got three already. A little too strong. Somebody knocked it in, either Mahmoud or Adele. I'm not sure who they're going to give credit to. I thought it was Adele. It was, you're yep. right. So they get something at the offensive glass. Robinson just stalking the defender. <laughs> he really is. That one rimmed out, so an opportunity for Louisville to close the gap a little bit. The defender's supposed to really stalk him. Yeah, I know. When he has the ball, and your call is right on the money. He's stalking the defender. Here's Sutton. Got it. Just inside the three-point line. And it's been rare that we've seen Louisville come down the floor and score two consecutive times. So let's see what that does to their energy at the defensive level. It gives them a little pickup. I think that's why you're hearing a little bit of noise in the crowd right now. Back-to-back yeah, -back buck. Buckets just got a double-digit lead of 10. Down to 6. And they can go down to 4 or less. They make this trip profitable. Snyder. Yes. 4-3 for Snyder in the first half. You love to force the action on the road to get the opposing coach, the home coach, to call a timeout. So nice reaction when they were in a little bit of trouble to cut this lead. Long-range shot for Snyder. Nothing but the bottom. Now Louisville's concerns this week were expanded yesterday after former player Brian Bowen, whose recruitment led to the firing. Basically, Rick Pitino was among a dozen players accused of receiving payments and other benefits from former sports agents. According to a Yahoo Sports report, documents obtained by the FBI into the ongoing investigation into corruption in college basketball details benefits to players or their families, ranging from meals to thousands of dollars in payments, and that represents potential NCAA violations for more than 20 teams who you see here, many of which currently in tournament contention. And, and some of the things I've taken away from today's conversation as it, as it was building today is I think with the NCAA, they understand that there has to be some due diligence in a lot of different areas. And also when you think about it, try, the goal there is just to continue to maintain the integrity of the amateur sport in the NCAA at all different levels. Uh, the one thing I did you know, understand is that they're looking at some of the rules, and maybe some of the rules are a little outdated, right. make some changes. I think that's part of life. So a 7-0 run has Louisville right back in this game. They trailed 28 to 18 before seven straight before that timeout. Quieted the crowd considerably. Wilson looking for a hook pass. Gets it back outside for three, and that three goes for Bibbs. They generally go back to their strength when they need a bucket. Bibbs is one of them from long range. Nice little rotation play there to come out of the set. Gets him moving without the basketball and patience. Here's Mahmoud underneath. Pretty delivery, too. Snyder delivering that right on the money to the baseline side. That's actually Mahmoud's second basket during that last time out. They changed that tip in from Adele oh. to Mahmoud. So he's got four. For those of you keeping score. Probably knows the scorekeeper <laughs> over there. <laughs> Make friends with the scorekeeper yeah. and the officials. Nice back in left hand. Won't go for Bibbs. And out of bounds to Louisville. So we see the action away. And all of a sudden, Bibbs is going to come and get to the play. A long way to run. It's also a long way to defend. He gets a wide open shot. 41% shooter from three-point strikes. We're coming out of a break. That's a terrific set to get a lot of guys involved in some good motion away from the basketball. Great way to stop a 7-0 run by the opposition as well. Here's a fadeaway jumper. Nice tip. Snyder, can he keep it going? Yes, he can. Five threes first half. How about the beauty of Snyder, too, tracking that shot? Little tip out by Sutton, which was a great play to start. Perry gets it, but then... 
Snyder comes from behind and says, hey, I'm right behind you. Give it to me and I have some rhythm on my shot. Get he, it to a shooter. Does he ever have rhythm? 15. For Clinton Snyder first half and makes it a one point game. As we approach two and a half minutes, first half drive blocked by Mamou. Beautiful block. Louisville can actually take the lead this trip. The last lead was eight to five. That's one of the toughest calls right there, Brad. Block charge. And I, and I think sometimes a defender anticipating that he's going to get hit starts to fall back just a little bit before. It was a little bit of traffic in there, so it's hard to see. But see that little shoulders going away, and I don't think he's, because he started off the floor, I don't think the defender got there quick enough. Wayne Sutton has his numbers already. And his free throw ties the game. Wednesday at CBS, the worst nightmares of past survivors will haunt the dreams of the new castaways. Brace yourself for Survivor Ghost Island for news Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Sutton can give the Cardinals the lead and does. How about that? They trailed by 10. They now lead for the first time since it was 8-5 to five, up by 1. David Padgett's team hanging around and they... Just worked with the defensive end of the floor. Buzz Williams not too happy with that last call, by the way. Another 7-0 run. It was started, part of it at least, by Mahmoud's block. That last trip down, Jim, and that was his 200th block of his career, and it led to the free throws on the other end. And now we've got Virginia Tech free throws coming up for Justin Robinson. And Mahmoud just gives him an anchor underneath. First in the ACC, eighth in the NCAA with three block shots per game. Been a little bit of an impact, though, don't you think, without Blackshear on the floor? Yeah, for sure. Two point guards today have been sensational. Quentin Snyder for Louisville, and this guy, Justin Robinson, for the Hokies. And, you know, leaving Blackshear on, on the bench, I think, makes a whole lot of sense with Buzz Williams making that decision. It's just too risky, especially in a close game now. You know, they were up. 8 to 10, he got away with it. Right. And if that's fine. Okay, they closed the gap a little bit. You have to live with that in the last two minutes, from the four minute to the two minute mark. Our second tie of the game. The first one was after back to back three point baskets. Now we're even at 32. Here's a steal, another little bit turnover, but they get it right back. And unfortunately for Alexander Walker, he had to try to go behind his back with that to keep it away from the Louisville player. And unfortunately, he couldn't control it. Here's Sutton. Off the front of the iron. That's a big seam for the basket from that angle when he caught it. Nice work by Mahmoud defensively, keeping it out of the lane. Out of 90 seconds of the half. Robinson to kick out Wilson, the extra pass, didn't want to take the shot. Yeah, Wilson's not a guy who generally shoots that. That's why he released it so quickly to this guy, Bibbs, who will shoot it. And he'll shoot it on the drive off the window. And last touched. Out of bounds by Horn. And you hear a horn. We've got 114 left, and then we'll have AT&T at the half. Greg and Clark and Seth will have the latest scores and highlights, plus a preview of third-round coverage of the Honda Classic. That's all coming up. AT&T at the half. I watched a couple hours yesterday. You know, I'm sorry, but I'm a Tiger Woods follower. There you go. And just to see him in the mix. I'll be watching again once I get to the airport. Uh, I believe a lot of people will be watching. <laughs> Oh, he got away with a skip again. That's the second time Snyder he got called for traveling the first time, not that time. And then a little bit of a ball fake just then by Adele. Really going to get the fans involved in a negative, in a negative way. Watch this one. Yeah, a little. One, two, well, maybe not. Maybe hung that left foot down, but watch this ball fake. Bang, you're done. Good scorers, if they get that ball fake above their shoulders, they are totally in control. Dang Adele has not scored once they took that basket away from him. He has now. Missed two games a couple weeks ago with a bad ankle. But the first time these two teams played, he was magnificent. Career high 27 points and 11 rebounds. And for a pre assists also. He's been just so consistent this year for this team. 25 out of 26 games and double figures for them. Well, you thought at one point a few minutes ago that the Hokies were going to run away and hide with this thing when they were up by 10. Now they're down by two. 
and especially on their home court, right? Yeah. Just thought the fans were going to keep the energy level up for them. Robinson. He starts driving. It looks like he's not going to stop. And I think they were looking for a possible two-for-one opportunity. This time, the hook pass out. Bibbs, three is short. It's about a five-second differential. Let's see if Lillard decides to sit on it. Well, That's a good, time time good timeout to make sure they get something out of this possession. We'll take one with them with 30.7 remaining in the half. Louisville was 15 and 4 at one point, but they've lost six of their last nine. But there's their tournament profile as it is right now. And how do they make it better? They make it better by getting a win here to start. Yeah. They have Virginia at home, and that's not going to be an easy task. But if they can somehow muster those two wins, they're at NC State to finish off the season. So important to get this win, and I think to play very competitively at least against Virginia, if not get that win if they can. They have been resilient in this first half after finding themselves in a double-digit disadvantage. Now they lead. And they hope to take that lead to the locker room. About a four-second difference, as Jim said. Shot clock game, Fox Snyder. That one was halfway down, too. It would have been a 6-3 of the first half. They had a little funny twist on that, almost like a right-to-left curveball thrown by a, a righty baseball player. Okies have missed seven of their last eight shots. Robinson's going to take the final one. <laughs> Basically at the buzzer. Brad, I can't begin to describe how difficult a shot that is from getting your positioning, your footwork in rhythm, and then being able to get the strength in your shot to carry it over the front rim. A remarkable shot. Watch all the different moves. Push towards the basket. Step back. One leg. That might back. be a two. They're looking at it right now. That's why we're waiting. Now, what His a shot, drag though. foot might have touched. He's backpedaling. Might have just done a tiptoe with the left foot. And that's why the officials over there are taking a look and we'll wait to be sure. But what a shot it was. Remember, if it's, if it's touching, it's a two. If right. it's in the air, it's fine. And that's what they're trying to figure out over there. Either way, what a shot to yeah. end the half, huh? Yeah, I'm not sure it was grazing the, uh, the, the floor just then when he, when he took the shot. He was grazing it a little bit as he backpedaled into his right foot. Greg and Clark and Seth are patiently waiting by. Guys, we'll get it to you as soon as we figure out if that was a two or a three. If it's a three, it's a one-point lead for the Hokies. If it's a two, we got a tie game at halftime. It is a two, and we have a tie game at halftime. Yes, he did track the foot. So we got that one figured out. And that is the end of the first half from Blacksburg. Score, the Hokies 34, the Cardinals 34. And the Greg Gumbel in New York. CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. AT&T. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. That little hokey won the diaper derby here at <laughs> halftime, winning the gold. I'm not sure who got the silver and bronze. The action on the court, as we take a look at the Infinity first half stats, was a little quicker than that. But at one point, Virginia Tech was shooting 59%, so they cooled off. Louisville warmed up. Louisville didn't turn it over as many times as they did earlier in the game. And we got a ball game right now. I like the way, Brad, that Louisville, like we talked about in the first half, they were in trouble, I thought, down 10, and it wasn't going in their favor. The fans were getting behind Virginia Tech, and right. all of a sudden they had a little bit of run after a good timeout. I thought, now all of a sudden we have a tie game. We got a nice game here. Well, Quentin Snyder had five threes in the first half, which is a career high. Leading scorer in the ball game. On the other side, Justin Robinson, who hit that fadeaway two-pointer at the buzzer to end the half was the highest score for the Hokies with 13. And here we go, second half. And the official said on that call that they, he did have his foot on the floor as he went into his shot. And the guy who had a career game the first time has only two points in this one, and that's Dang Adele, but he's going to the free throw line right now. That's three fouls on Devin Wilson. Adele's got to be a little bit frustrated, I would think, after having such a great game. First time these two teams met back on January 13th. I don't know if the ankle's bothering or not. He missed a couple of games with a bad wheel. Yeah, a little bit more attention to detail. You know, you come off a game like that, one of the things you've got to make sure if you're a coach, 
is that a guy doesn't match up well against your players. So you really want to come out and emphasize that don't let him get off to a real good start and get his rhythm. And playing at home versus playing on the road is a little different, but Buzz Williams has done a nice job just stopping him from scoring. 0 for 4, but getting all of his points at the free throw line. Which gives Louisville a two-point lead here to open up the second half. Robinson. Bibbs trying to feed Blackshear inside. Got it to him. Good move. Just didn't make it pay off. But we're right back to him. And here's an open three. Flanked off the side of the backboard, Alexander Walker. So Wilson has to do something with that ball. He catches it, he's wide open. Maybe put it on the floor and drive if he doesn't want to take that shot. Nice weak side rebound. They're going right back to number 13. And Spalding's fouled on his way to the basket. I'm going to go back in ancient history on you right now. Spalding brings to mind to me a guy named Bill Willoughby. Oh, Remember wow. that name from yes. way back? Long, <laughs> lanky. Uh-huh. Good one. He just has the same style playing. He's, you know, he jumps real well. He's, you know, talented in terms of running the floor. His uncle, Manuel Fours, played at Louisville back in the 80s. He's a somewhat of a second generation Cardinal. I really like watching Robertson work. Nice look. Try nice. to wrap around pass to Blackshear. Had him knocked out of bounds. Yeah, he really understands where he's going with it. That time, trying to wrap it around as you touched on, but defensively, they read it pretty well. He had one of those against either Georgia Tech or Virginia. I don't know, I watched both games, where he kicked it out for a three-pointer. He was way down on the baseline and somehow got that pass through all the traffic. Not that time, though. Post-up opportunity. Of course, Blackshear with two fouls to defend. Spalding got it over Blackshear. Boy, that was an interesting little way. He flipped that up there and had the right spin on it to catch the rim and carry over it. But I like the way they're trying to attack Blackshear early in this particular one. And a timeout as Louisville has its biggest lead here in the opening minute and a half of half number two. Cardinals by four. Take a look at our AT&T fast analysis, Jim. Well, back at the beginning of this broadcast, we started talking about how do you play defense if you're Louisville. Spalding with a terrific block. Does he stop the play now after he makes a good defensive effort? Now he comes down the floor and finishes it off. Very active, good runner, and they find him on the break. And one of the key things is going to be this matchup with him when he's up against Blackshear. Blackshear with the three fouls. That may be the most important number on the entire stat sheet at this particular moment. He did a good job for about, well, he took him out at about the 10-minute mark. But to remain with just two in that first half, and they kept him out the last couple minutes, but now with three, and that's vital. And I think you over, I think you overemphasize going at him when he's at the defensive end. Looking to get it to him offensively. And they finally do. Wilson got it to him in close, and he draws the foul. And either Sutton or Spalding. That's where that switching has hurt Louisville a little bit because the patience of Virginia Tech's offense, waiting to just sit it out, make sure they're comfortable when they give it to Blackshear at the right time. Carey hit his first two in the first half. Likewise, rips that one here in the second half. Get the CBS Sports app for inside access to your favorite teams. Watch highlights, get breaking news, scores, and more. Download the CBS Sports app today. Mentioned his dad, Kelly, played at Stetson, was a former Atlantic Sun Player of the Year. His mom, also a hoopster at Stetson, so he was born to play basketball. Now he's coming out. Yep. Got a couple on the offensive end, and now they'll sit him with those three fouls. That's exactly what you want to do because you have to anticipate Louisville would try to run that ball right at him, whether it's from the perimeter side or get Spalding on a one-on-one -on -one matchup with him. So good, good decision to bring him out at the defensive end. Lava oh. and what a finish. <laughs> Beautiful dish inside, and Spalding finishes off with style. And it's that execution with Spalding. He kind of just glides into his play, and then he, and at the very end, he spurts towards the basket for the lob. 
You know, we said not a lot of scoring from Adele, but he's had more than one pass like that today. So assist-wise, he's done a nice job. And here he comes. The numbers if they spread out a little bit. Three on two. He lobs it again. This time, too many defenders underneath Spalding, and it comes the other way. Good look. Kick out, three-pointer. Hokey's got it. Alexander Walker's first basket is a big one. Yeah, they love to run the floor, the Hokies do, and if Robinson has the basketball, guys know for a fact that they're going to get the ball at some point on the break. Good spread on the run. Got the crowd back into it at Castle Coliseum. And a turnover to Louisville, their first of this half. So you have two mistakes in a row by Louisville. They have three on two. Break was a little too tight. Here's a better execution. The play before they go upstairs. Nobody's home to defend that one at all. And there, there's that nice look by Robinson across into the left corner for Alexander Walker. His first basket of the game has made it a one-pointer and now an opportunity for the Hokies to take the lead back. Alexander Walker with only two against Clemson. He's been a double-figure scorer a lot for them. Clark and some tall timber in there. Had it partially blocked. Hope he's get it back. And knocking it in off the window for P.J. Horn. And it's pretty extension, too, by Horn. The work on the offensive glass, and all of a sudden, the fans are back in the building. Seemed as if they went to the concession stands for a while. <laughs> ACC standings, Virginia, that lone loss in conference play came at the hands of these Hokies in overtime. Virginia Tech trying to get its 10th win, tied for fourth place right now in the conference. And they've got a matchup, the Hokies do, with Duke Monday night. Still a little work to do for some of those teams. Yep. This is so big for Louisville. And at the same time, Virginia Tech just to keep their rhythm going, their momentum going. They were tied at halftime at 34. Louisville took a four-point lead, and now Virginia Tech has snatched it back from them. Once again, a little stagnant for the Cardinals here. Not going anywhere with it except for the perimeter. There you go. I think something happened with it. Five on the shot clock. Snyder's been the hot hand. Missed that three, though, and it's kept alive by Adele. But you get an open shot because they're moving without the basketball, and they're getting some action going. Still looking for Spalding on the blocks if they can get it. They'll pick and roll play again. Adele got it back. His own miss. Going to try it again. The finger roll was rejected. They get too many opportunities, Louisville, but much better defensive effort on the last trip. Oh, jumper from the free throw line won't go. Yeah, sometimes you stand there so close, you're wide open, and you don't extend your hand all the way. You pull the string on it. The quickness on the corner is picking up on both ends. It sure is. It sure is. And the question becomes whether the quickness will lead to fast, bad shots, or good shots. Lob it over the top, you get one. Spalding got there great go. position off the window. Good recognition, too, also out front by Adele. Just be patient and watch your big guy. See him use the body to get some angle and give himself as much space for that over-the-top lob as you can get. If Louisville wins this game, Spalding's going to buy Adele an ice cream cone when it's over because <laughs> he's been very helpful on those lobs underneath. Way outside is Robinson. And Adele will rip down the board. Adele's playing a little bit of a swing man point guard action. Again the lob, and again Spalding throws it home. And how about Adele doing everything with the basketball, not scoring, where he's 0 for 6, but he has 7 assists, and that was a beauty to avoid the charge, too, as he drifted into the left corner with that pass. Charge by 3. It almost seems like they should be up by more. Uh -huh. It does. It'll be a foul on Sutton on the drive to the basket by Bibbs. A little exchange, and what do they get? They get it from the middle this time, and a nice little finish. Beautifully done. Tomorrow at 1 Eastern on the road to the Final Four. Big Ten battle, second rack Michigan State's 111 straight. They head to Madison to take on the Badgers. Big Ten standings, Michigan State in the driver's seat right now to win the Big Ten title, but they've got people breathing down their neck right now, including Ohio State, who won in double overtime last night over Indiana.
Purdue had such a great stretch and then had a little bit of trouble yep, there for a while. Bounce. Michigan won today, right? And they're always tough. Yeah. You know, Beeline gets them so ready to play. Michigan State's been playing well, though. They've been averaging 12 points, winning by 12 points a game on that stretch that they've had for 11 in a row. So they have turned the corner and been playing very well. Here in Blacksburg, it's the Hokies trailing on their home floor by three. Trying to cut into that is Justin Bibbs. First trip to the free throw line was off the mark. And so is this one. Actually, a pretty good free throw shooter, but not today so far. Got the second. And the key for Bibbs from a Louisville perspective is they've kept him away from the three point line and not scoring from that long range, which is a huge win for the Cardinals if they can maintain that over the next 14 minutes. The passing of Louisville recently has really led to some excellent scoring. They've had 13 assists on 15 field goals. And a little bit of a drift away from the basket by Spalding. Go towards it. Use that height. I don't think you're going to get your shot blocked. Nice look. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Beautiful pass. The no luck to P.J. Horner. There was a look. There wasn't much of one. Yeah, and he gave a slight look to his right out to Clark on the wing. Oh, too far. Chance for some transition points goes by the board with that turnover. And now the drive inside, no foul call, rebound off to P.J. Horn. Open on the other end, three, got it! Well, I'd love to play with Robinson. You're willing to run, right? You're going to get the basketball. He understands. You see, he basically took that ball one or two dribbles towards the middle of the floor to his right to make it even a clearer pass to the left side. And all of a sudden, the Hokies are back in business. Bibbs three gives him the lead by three. Underneath, Spalding trying to quiet the crowd. Got his own miss. Hit the deck and walked with it. Yeah, trying to get through two guys. Just not making it happen. And Robinson has four assists and watch him just pick people apart. Beautifully done. He kind of looks to his right to get everybody to freeze. There's that one dribble to the right to get his partner Bibbs the open shot from the corner. That is Virginia Tech basketball. Justin Robinson, who recently passed Del Curry on the all-time assist mark here at Virginia Tech in the number five spot. And you can see why with some of his passes today. You know, I saw Del Curry earlier this week and I mentioned that to him. He said, I wasn't concerned about the assists. <laughs> I was concerned about scoring. <laughs> Just like his son did the other oh, yeah. 44, whatever it was. Louisville three off the mark. Kept alive by Adele and he's fouled, I think, by Clark. Two guys were there, Clark and Bibbs. And Clark picks up the first and the second. And Adele still 0 for 6. For a guy who's 0 for 6 from the floor with only four points, he has had some impact on this game in terms of his assists, seven, six rebounds. Not letting the fact that he's not scoring points affect his overall play. Virginia Tech has regained this lead with Kerry Blackshear on the bench, which is saying something. Dell from 15, got it. Boy, oh, that is a difficult shot to defend. Squeezing through two players, the jump stop. Just a remarkable look by Adele. Really on the dribble. I'll have to watch for the big guy, Mamou, down deep. Clark inside, score. Nice read. Clark read it. Mahmoud went uh, and vacated the middle of the floor. Nice time to attack. When he slips back under the basket, you have to worry about him being the second guy in. King pull up. His 18-footer is good. That's his first basket. Big one. And we haven't seen much of that really for Louisville except for Snyder shooting the ball from the outside. Yep. You go a couple of more minutes, maybe try to get to that 10 minute mark with Blackshear. Inside, the hook is good. PJ Horn's got six all this half. 
on that extension with the jump hook. He's not afraid of the big guy getting ready to block a shot. Mahmoud. Snyder. Missed the three. Rebound. Try to save it. Up on the table. And it'll be Louisville ball out of bounds when we come back. Three-point game right now. 10.54 to go. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by Lexus. Experience amazing. Sonic. This is how you Sonic. And by Bud Light, reminding you to not drink and ride your horse. Some of the sights from the first meeting back in Louisville, 94-86 on January 13th. And we mentioned Dangadell at 27, a career high in that one. Louisville shot lights out, especially from three-point range. They were 13 out of 23. They've won 13 straight, and this is a little bit deceiving because since they both joined the ACC, there hasn't been that many battles. But they do go way back, the old Metro Conference from 1978 to 1995. So they know each other uh, history-wise. And this has been a good one. We were tied at 34 at halftime, three ties in the first half. Virginia Tech had its biggest lead of 28 to 18. Louisville's biggest lead was earlier in this half by four. And right now they're down by three with just under 11 to go. Cheating in on him. Adele missed the three, got it back though, off the tip rebound, a little bit closer in, and he buries it. And if Louisville wins this game, it's going to be because of their work on the boards. 34 to 20 is what they've been out rebounding Virginia Tech. Close on the statistics, other than that number. On the year, Virginia Tech has been out rebounded by their opponents by about one a game, but big disadvantage here today so far. Inside drive, left hand just too strong. Not quite sure how Alexander Walker missed that one. But he did, and we're at the midway point of the second half. And how long do you leave Robinson watching this game? Adele on the drive. Go up. Sutton the kick out in the corner. Three seconds. Three second violation. You get it in there. You have to try to get the shot off. I think that's what David Padgett would have liked to have seen. He would have shot it. Pretty good free field goal percentage for him. Was yeah, he was. second in Louisville history? Former three-year starter at center. He was named the interim head coach back in late September of 2017, this earlier this season. And we asked him, you know, I'm sure what you'd like to do is have a great run here at the end, have your team make the tournament, and take that interim title out of your title. And he said, all I'm worried about right now is I want these two seniors, meaning Schneider and Mahmoud, to make the NCAA tournament. That's all I'm worried about. Deflected it away from himself to the team. Robinson back on the floor with this guy. Blackshear got his man in the air and got Adele in the air. He'll go to the free throw line. It's, it's, it's unbelievable how much easier the shots come when Robinson is on the floor. A little ball fake there and a little out of control, but Adele makes a decision just then to go out and try to block the shot rather than trying to get in position. I don't think he could have for a charge. Blackshear playing with the three fouls right now. Five for five from the free throw line. Mahmoud comes out. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see now that Spaulding's on the floor. What did we see before Blackshear went to the bench? We saw post-up opportunities for Spaulding. I think I would definitely call his number right here. I'd have Adele passing it to him, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The way that combo's been working. Watch for the slice cut. There comes the cut. Oh, nice oh. hand. A steal by Robinson. Going to the rack against Adele. The oh. is good by Amon Hill. Robinson had no choice but to try to reverse at the very end of that play. Obviously trying to make it, but the key was that he didn't get it blocked, and he gets it up on the glass. It's kind of like an off the backboard alley-oop that you'd see in a dunking contest. 
Five point lead, biggest of this half for the Hokies. Louisville's got to quiet things down here, get a good shot. Yeah, they are a little erratic here at this set with eight, seven seconds to go. And now three to shoot. They got a baseline jumper. Oh, and it dropped in somehow for Sutton. Are you kidding me? Please don't turn to me and say, how did that go in? <laughs> I'm not sure. That, that just died. It was like a knuckleball. It died on the rim. But it died in a good spot. It did. Died and went underground for three in the eight-minute mark at 2-4 game. Rebound off to Spaulding. Guard plays so important on the road. Snyder loves it outside. Gets it right back from Adele. On the drive, not going to work. There's too many long, pokey arms in the way of Quentin Snyder on that drive, who's been held scoreless, by the way, in the second half, but has five threes for the game. And Adele turned down a three-point shot just then, too. That's a bump. And that's a foul on Spaulding. That's three on Ray Spaulding. So when you get an opportunity, Brad, you want to go if you're Virginia Tech and make something happen, it'll stick out defensive play, throws it up. And he open and finishes it. Let's take a look at the Jersey Mike's game summary. Huge difference on bench points. They did that the other night, too. Jim, they outscored Clemson. Their bench 19 to nothing, so that's helped. Nine guys have scored. Dell and Spaulding, the guys keep the Cardinals in this thing. They've been a nice combination. He is just to look for one another, too. And that was a beautiful entry pass over the top to get Spaulding involved. But it's out. So you got the combination working. You just keep going to it until Virginia Tech figures it out. Look at the line. Working on a triple-double on the bench right now. But eight, seven, and eight. And the last three games, as we mentioned, the scores were over 80 points. Teams are going up and down in this contest with Virginia Tech and Louisville. So really, Virginia Tech has put the clamps on it in terms of playing how they've been playing the last three games. We'll see if they can execute down the stretch to make sure they win the game being played at a, a slower pace. So again, for the Hokies right now, Justin Robinson not on the floor. Beatty is the point guard, and he's going up inside the lane. Beatty with his second basket. Just a little thing, too. Blackshear's on the floor, and he was underneath the basket, forcing the bigs for Louisville to stay back under the basket just a touch too much. Blackshear overplayed that a little bit. Now will come up with a steal. Three-pointer baseline, and it goes for Perry. You know, the size is Spalding. It's 6'10". He gets a double team coming his way, but he's tall enough to look over the top for a diagonal into the corner. Perry at 32%, not a great three-point shooter. Good spot up, though. It's their eighth of the game. We mentioned they had 13 the first go-around between these two teams. That last one's made it a one-pointer until Blackshear knocked it off the window right there. And that's what they were missing on their offense. They were missing that post-up presence when he had his foul trouble. Buzz Williams had no choice but to keep him off the floor. Now you can let him run because we're nearing six minutes. And he has been able to just play through the fouls, and he has only three fouls now. Snyder finally got another one to go, his sixth of the game. 18 for Snyder, all on three-pointers. Tie game, 59. This has just been a real test of wills. <laughs> I'm not so sure both of these teams or either one of them has played their best basketball this afternoon, but they have both been very competitive. Under 10 to shoot. See how different it is without a Robinson in there, huh? Clark's going to try to spin in on Sutton. Fade away. Tough shot. Got it to go in and out. Spalding with a rebound. Now look across at the scorer's table. He's, he's getting ready to check back in. Yeah, he's not even kneeling down. No. He's ready to roll. He wants a whistle in the fastest way possible. Oh, lost it. Blackshear picks up the loose ball. Costly Cardinal turnover there. Their 13th. Blackshear anticipated guys diving for that ball. Nice oh, cut. Back door. Pass. And a reverse jam by 
by Bibbs. Putting a little mustard on that one. Yeah, you think of him as that outside shooter. You, you bait and you bait and you wait for a guy to turn his head. A beautiful cut to the basket. Snyder in traffic. Three-pointer goes from the baseline for Sutton, of all people. He's got three out there. And that was a little ragged along the, the perimeter just then again for Louisville because the Virginia Tech really, really was buckling down on the perimeter defensively. Sutton with a Louisville career high with those three-pointers. He's got 15. His three-point shooting, I don't mean to burn on him, but he only had 12 threes coming in. He's got three today. A little bit of trouble. And Virginia Tech with a costly miscue. Wayne Sutton, the sophomore transfer out of UNC Asheville. He says, just give me that thing. I got this. <laughs> and he does. Knock it down. Coming up next, PGA Tour on CBS is at the PGA National Champion course. Third round coverage of the Honda Classic. Nine players within five of the lead, led by Jamie Lovemark, five under. Tiger even right now. That's all coming up. We'll turn it over to Jim Nance and the gang as soon as we're done here, which is 3.57 away, barring overtime. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Snyder and Robinson going to try to run their action on the offense. And it's played by Blackshear for the deflection. Louisville's had some awful turnovers here in the last three minutes. And that one was just a tough, that was a pass you should not have tried to make. Just way too much traffic in there for that one. Blackshear has a mismatch down there if they want to get it to him. He's trying. He's got Perry on his hip. He's going to take a three-pointer instead. It's off the mark. And I think you have to recognize that one quickly. Get it to him. Because he has been playing well when he's had his touches with his 12 points. He's got to the line for six attempts. Made all of it. Bulldogs hit its last four three-pointers. Ten for the game. Whoa, no whistle, no foul. Loose ball comes to Snyder. Five on the shot clock. He backpedals and now realizes he's going to have to hoist one over there. Around Clark and he got it. Are you kidding me? Uh, I think he, he's not kidding you with that one. He had to tuck his right shoulder. The only way you get that shot off is if you tuck the right shoulder, which is his strong hand, by the defender. That is just a backbreaker. Still plenty of time to go, but watch the ball fake. Clear your shoulder, and now you have a little bit of space. He may have gotten hit there, too. Beautifully done, recognizing the shot clock situation. His, Three on it. His previous best making three-pointers, I mentioned earlier, was four. He had five in the first half. He's got seven for the game. Everything he's hit has been a three. And I think he got hit here. Yeah, just because he's going up and he's tucking his arm underneath. That could have been an end. That should have been an end one. All of a sudden, the cards have a four-point lead again. Matching their biggest to this half. And how about the timing and score of this game to pull that one off? Wow. I mean, if you did that in the first half, okay, it's a great yeah, shot. Big deal. Yeah, big time here. Little hand check. It's going to be on Adele. That's his third. Robinson and Snyder on their respective teams are going to have to make terrific decisions in the last 244 of this game because they're going to be touching the ball a lot. Another three. This one in and out again for good pick, Bibbs. And a good pickup just then by Spalding. He got the rebound, was starting to dribble, and Clark came right behind him. And the simple things of keeping a possession alive. Two and a half to go. Snyder the kick out to Perry. He'll try a triple. Yes! The three-point shooting of Louisville. And the one extra dribble by Snyder to get that to him in a better spot for his delivery. Biggest lead of the game for the Cards. Oh, good try, but too low. Robinson trying to make a pass underneath the Blackshear, just way too low. 
Tomorrow noon Eastern over CBS Sports Network. Number 11 Cincinnati looking to reclaim their dominance in the American. They'll take out Tulsa. Tulsa looking for a big win only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Virginia Tech comes up with a full-court press, forcing the timeout. We'll take a little break. Louisville by seven with 2.08 to go. Jim guards have hit their last six threes that they've hoisted. And the timing has been great for them. Virginia Tech a little slow to react. Uh -oh, this is trouble. Watch out. But they were coming at us, partner. Yeah, no, I think Ray Spalding <laughs> saved us from getting decapitated. But he turned it over in the process. Yeah, big turnover. Let's see if they can answer. Nice pass. Blackshear. Nice adjustment in midair. And one. Oh boy, the Hokies needed that. Uh, they tracked that ball down at half court for openers. That's the that gets the play started. Watch for this ball fake in the lane. Wham! There it is. You get a big leap by Spalding, and nobody's home. You leave a little guy down low, and it's just not going to happen against Blackshear using his frame. If they ever needed a bucket. It was just then. 14 for Carey, and as you see, has not missed today from the line. Until now. Three full court action. That's been a jump. The double teams. Here comes one. Trying to foul Adell, I think. Didn't get it done. Looked like Robinson was trying to foul him. Virginia Tech only has three fouls, so they could be overly aggressive right now, and I'm not sure why they're not. And Ten seconds left now. You don't want to foul. And still no foul. Still no shot. And the rebound off to Clark. Minute and a half to go. Here's their big possession. Keep them alive. So they don't turn it into a free throw shooting contest. Robinson and pulled the trigger on a quick three, missed it. But a foul is going to be on Blackshear, I think. That's four. And that's okay, though. They're not going to be shooting. They're going to go way down, and they're going to have to, Louisville's going to have to take it out against the press again. Keep in mind, you know, he, he can move a little bit. They're not forcing the action on him. Good entry pass. Snyder lobs it ahead to Perry. Louisville trying to use some clock, spread it out here a little bit if they can without throwing it away. And they've done a pretty good job here. Yeah, and now they foul Snyder. Yeah, there, there's the fifth foul, Brad. And if, if you're going to do that, you should have done that 10 seconds ago. Because you have to get them. To, if that's the plan, and I think it's a good plan if you're down. Two possessions with about a minute left, especially three. Then you go into a fouling mode. But their good defense in the second half and staying away from foul trouble actually turns into a penalty for them. It's hurting last... them now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now they have foul, five fouls, and they have to just blitz. Great they point. made the decision. Are they going to foul? Yeah, they go. I'm looking over Buzz Williams, same as Bibbs, and he said you have to foul because we've decided that's our strategy coming down the stretch. It's amazing you point that out. The fact that they played such great defense without fouling, it's ended up hurting them right now yep. with 63 seconds to go. And now you're down five. I think you just up oh, there. You go. It's okay. Although Blackshear, that might be it for him. If it's on him, it's gone. And it is. And he is. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one again because they would need him for a post-present look at the offensive end. And I get it. You have to double team there. You have to come away with a quick foul. But if you're Blackshear, maybe you wait for a guard to come over and take a swipe so you don't pick that one up. So Carey has another good game, but he's gone. 14 points. Five rebounds was. Six out of seven on his free throws. And done for the day. And now the attention turns back around to Louisville with a five-point lead. And a one-and-one one coming up. And Adele's going to go to the line. Where he hasn't missed today either. Four for four. Dell, 6'7 junior, he was born in Sudan, grew up basically in Melbourne, Australia. Had a very quiet first half, and then he's come on to put quite a line together between the rebounds, the assists, and now an opportunity also to go into double digits. Score. What an impact for a guy who's two for ten from the field today. What an impact on this game. Louisville has to keep an eye on Robinson because you know he's going to be a factor. Good pass. Three-pointer in route. 
Off the front. Got the lob by Robinson. Right back to Bibbs for three. He's short. Now he got a foul. There it is. And Adele's fouled as he got the rebound. Five point lead with 50 seconds to go. Even though they didn't score, it was amazing just how quickly Robinson got it to a shooter yeah. just then. Well, you can't take an eye off him for a split second. So Adele, who missed his last one, steps back in. Sometimes that can work to your favor, though, get right back to the line again. And it did. Yep. Even though you missed, sometimes you want, if you're going to get back to that line, you get back within 10 seconds and you still have your rhythm from the previous shot. This to give him 10 points, 9 rebounds, and 8 assists. And more importantly, stretch the lead to 7 if he does. Yeah, that's the three possession. And the Hokies going to call a quick timeout. 11-2 run for the Cardinals trying to pull an upset on the road. Here's a romantic schedule for Louisville. It starts with top right Virginia. And then at NC State and the ACC Tournament. Each team won timeout remaining. And Virginia Tech ball right now with 48 seconds remaining. Just go back to that point where they didn't foul that much at the time. They probably could have had 20 more seconds on the clock. They had to give up those fouls because of it. There's a quick hitter here for Robinson. There it is. Not close, but in close. Gets help from Hill. So here's the same strategy. Maybe time for a quick double team if you get one. Well, out. That was well done defensively. Ahmed Hill's 1,000th career point for Virginia Tech has made it a five-point game. Don't forget, coming up next, third-round coverage of the Honda Classic. Coverage is available right now on PGATourLive.com and CBSSports.com. Nice substitution here for Louisville, too, trying to break this press. They put in McMahon, who's a 91% free-throw shooter. You look at them with the way they're lined up. you got Perry behind them at 93%. And then you also have Snyder there, who's just about 90%. Full-court pressure here from the Hokies. It'll be Adele to inbound. At the line. Get it into any one of these guys if you get a good free throw shooter. Does run a little bit. Got it okay. into McMahon right back to Adele. Ahead to Perry. Time is of the essence, and not, Wilson finally gets the foul. Boy, you're not kidding, Brad. They have to take that foul when the ball comes in. When they don't get the quick steal, they have to foul immediately. That was 12 seconds. Yeah. yeah. It should really be about 45 seconds if they executed it properly, and now they get to see Perry shoot the free throws. You yeah, ask it about Darius Perry, you see his numbers. He's 26 of 28 from the free throw line this year. 27 of 29 for the freshman out of Power Springs, Georgia. He's had two big time threes in this half. And now this big free throw upcoming. He was a little short on that shot, but his shoulders fell forward. Instead of falling back, it's a little thing when you shoot. Watch his shoulders to see if they carry through. Got him. Right up there. Seven-point game. 36 seconds is all we have left. He's a quick hitter. They're not going to give up that easy three. So they go to the drive. And... That took a long time, and then it was two misses, and then a foul, as Wilson will foul out, and Snyder will go to the line. For a team that was down 10 points in the first half, wow. it looked like they were kind of sliding. They regrouped in a big-time way, especially after the half. They were down 28-18. to 18. They went on that 7-0 run. It forced a timeout by Virginia Tech. Then they worked their way to a halftime tie of 34. Led by four early in this half and then gave up the lead. And Vontek came back and led by as much as four. It looks like Bibbs is cramping up. All right. Number calf. I wonder why. It's not hot in here, is it? Not at all. He 
talked about Virginia Tech have a date with Duke on Monday night and then Miami after that and then the ACC tournament. From the point when Virginia Tech had its 61 to 59 lead Louisville's been on a 13 to 4 push here in basically the last four and a half minutes. And now an 89 percent free throw shooter number two in the ACC at the line. Still something special is going to have to happen for Virginia Tech. Not enough time on the clock. That ties a career high, by the way, for Quentin Snyder. 22 points. Almost all of it came from three-point land. Robinson fouled on the inside with just under 13 to go. Spalding picks up the foul. Doesn't look like it's going to matter right now with an eight-point lead. Hey, what I can give these fans credit. Hardly, well, a few of them are heading to the exits right now, but they were in here 9,000 plus strong other sellout they saw a good back and forth ACC battle between the Hokies and the Cardinals that's the first point of the second half for Justin Robinson who was really sensational throughout but when he wasn't on the floor it was a different looking team I think I agree with you in terms of just even getting their sets squared away tried to miss Whoa. that free throw and couldn't just swung his body out of there, caught Clark right in the face with his head. So we come down the other way if Chris can clear the tears. Or rather, if Sutton can't, Clark trying to shake it off. Sutton's already got a career high day of 14 points. Trying to add to it here. So Louisville appears to be on its way to its 19th win, 9 and 7 in the conference, with which tie Virginia Tech in the ACC standings. Turned out to be a pretty good decision starting him today. Well, huh? I guess. <laughs> it really paid the big dividends. Nine-point game. Final five seconds as they give Robinson a trip to the hoop. And the Louisville Cardinals in Blacksburg. Huge win considering what's going on this week. With the NCAA's decision on Tuesday to deny their appeal, they lose a 2013 banner at Louisville. But now they are nine and seven and in the thick of the middle, I guess, of the Atlantic Coast Conference with a big win on the road. 75-68 is the final. That's going to do it from Blacksburg. Coming up next, third round coverage of the Honda Classic in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. For Jim Spinock, our entire CBS crew, Brad Nessler saying so long. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.